Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. This is the post-fight review for Aslan Bek Makhmadov versus Pavel Sauer, which was uh, headlining a card down in Mexico for Eye of the Tiger Management. And this was all over in 33 seconds. Makhmadov wrecks Pavel Sauer with a right hand. He had no regard from Sauer from the opening bell, just tracked forward. No defense, just looking to get him out of there. Definitely was not looking to get paid for overtime here didn't want the rounds under his belt he wanted to take Pavel Sauer out and uh, from the get-go Pavel Sauer was feeling every single punch from Makhmadov and obviously the one that floored him a big right hand and this is a split second after it landed Sauer went down in a screaming heap all over a moment later a second later 33 seconds all she wrote referee had seen enough Sauer he was up maybe a minute or so later and able to um, leave the ring under his own stick Team. So Aslan Bek Makhmadov, another win, 12-0 and 0 now, and I guess it's the case of, you know, this was his first fight for 2021, it's July, he's been out since October, you can kind of go, okay, so he needed a tune-up, he needed some activity, but what now? What are we going to see? And I guess one thing I'll touch on first is... Um, uh, Makhmadov is clearly no longer with uh, Golden Boy, not co-promoted by him anymore, never utilized that deal. So he is with Eye of the Tiger Management, which um, he was in a co-promotional deal with Golden Boy, um, but that didn't pan out. Whatever happened, the pandemic, who knows? But um, they are going to have to find him some meaningful fights. And a guy who I would have said would have been some good rounds, especially if he can't get some of the names that they've been wanting, some of the more tougher, durable guys that are more of a profile, maybe some top 30 guys, because Pavel Sauer is what, a top 80, top 100 guy. He just gets battered by a lot of guys. And part of the reason that they made this fight, um, at least from Camille Estefan from Eye of the Tiger Management, was they wanted to have a comparison with other heavyweights in the heavyweight division who'd fought Sauer. So very specious reasoning there. But the only comparison we can draw is that okay Makhmadov takes him out in a round or less than a round same for Philip Hergovic you've had Huey Fu uh, Fury took him out in a couple of rounds Nathan Gorman a couple of rounds three rounds whatever it was maybe it was two and three reversed for Huey Fury and Gorman and Jermaine Franklin who was taking the distance what we confirmed was what we already knew Arslan Bek Makhmadov is past these sort of opponents he needs to be facing much tougher competition. And a name I would have thrown out there is someone at least as a stay busy. You can get him. He has tra traveled overseas before. Durable um, veteran journeyman guy, Joey DeVeco. But maybe that won't happen because we've just had Makhmadov preparing for this fight. He was in New York for a month and he was actually working with Adam Kovnatsky and also Joey DeVeco. So, I mean, the fact that they're sparred together maybe lessens the likelihood they will fight. I mean, it's hard to know, but um, Joey DeVeco, obviously, having sparred him, will have some insight. Some, uh, And he's a tough, durable guy. But um, And that's the sort of opponent that Makhmadov needs while they seemingly are treading water trying to get him some meaningful fights. We, know, we don't need to see any more Pavel Sowers of the world. I get it. It was his first fight of the year. Activity, blow the ring rust away. But what does he get out of you know this sort of fight? I mean, his last fight was, what, 10 seconds versus Dylan Carmen, And then you had this one here, which was 30 seconds or so. His last fight that went any rounds was against Samuel Peter in 2019. At the point where his career was starting to build momentum, it has just slowed. The thing with Golden Boy has fallen through. The pandemic has, you know, obviously hurt his career. Now he's 12-0. and 0. He's, you know, 32 years old. they got to hit the go button. If they really believe in his talent and they say that they're going to take him to a world title, got to stick your hand in your pocket. Probably going to have to overpay for good opponents. At a certain point, that's just what happens. That was part of the reason that they wanted to link up with Golden Boy was to bring him to the American market, get some opponents, get in that sort of zone sort of, you know, sphere, get him on zone, but obviously it hasn't happened. So maybe we could see him pop up again in the United States, maybe on PBC. I mean, who knows? Maybe with top rank, he does have some top rank con uh, connections with Arta Baturbiev. Obviously that stable with Mark Grant. Ramsey, um, who trains a number of fighters, does have some links into top rank with fighters that are signed with top rank. So I wouldn't discount that. But even then, I mean, they've got to whoever's, you know, leading his career, leading the charge on it 
has to know that the Pavel Sowers of the world are not good enough. It's cannon fodder. We've been here, done that, got the postcard. It would have been much better to have someone durable who can, you know, move, who can actually test Makhmadov. You know, some like Ala, the fight with Jonathan Rice, which went seven rounds, valuable rounds against a mover, and Makhmadov had to figure a few things out. Pavel Sauer is just a punch bag waiting to be decapitated, and so he was. But there was one, I guess, promising thing that in the post fight, Makhmadov actually got on the mic. And he was speaking in English, which is, you know, one of the few times I've actually heard him do so. His English was actually quite good. And he also had threw out some, you know, Mexican um, sort of, um, you know, muchas gracias, all that sort of stuff. A few little salutations, etc. Thank you, yada, yada, yada. But if Makhmadov can improve his English to the point where he can hold conversations and can do a bit more online on social media in English, That will help him too in the long run, at least promoting his career. He can get into some trash talk. They need to actually utilize, you know, some of the the highlights that they've got. They need to build on what they've got here because you're kind of looking at this guy right now going, it feels like it's almost like a waste of talent. He's on the precipice of doing something, but they just can't push him to that next level. And clearly he's ready for it. You know, he gets nothing from a Pavel Sauer fight and, you know, those guys who just aren't durable enough to take a punch. That's why some of these guys, like a Joey DeVaco, it's not a it's not a sexy fight, but it might be the right fight at the right time, at least to keep him busy. And that's the key thing now. He can't be having, you know, nine, ten months out of the ring at a time. Only two fights since 2019. Sure, the pandemic has been an issue, but, you know, other promoters, other, you know, fighters have been much more active and things are opening up. And I guess this is part of the reason that, you know, they've had this card in Mexico as opposed to doing it in Montreal, etc. But hopefully there's not a massive gap now and he can be, you know, active another couple of times in 2021, if only just for the activity and to, you know, to build towards rankings, etc. Because clearly he needs to be in better and bigger fights now. And if he doesn't get those steps now, it you know, his career could end up being one of those, you know, what if type ones. So I guess we'll see what happens next. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.